Good morning, new vlog. I promise this is the fanciest I will be all vlog. This morning, I'm starting off nervous because today is the day of North Texas Teen Book Festival, wherein I am going to be on a booktube panel. I woke up way too early, so I started getting ready, and I'm just like a nervous wreck right now. This happens every year. I'm like, oh my god, I'm so scared that I get there and it's fine. So I have like half an hour until my friend picks me up. Rachel's taking me there, who, if you watched last year's vlog, she was there. We met Todd and Muffy together. I love her. I don't think I'm, oh, I just realized I didn't paint my nails. I'm not bringing any books to get signed, which I'm trying to think, like, should I? Really the only people that I like super duper care about are like Kirsten White, Libba Bray, Emma Mills is gonna be there and I don't own any of her books so I'm wondering like do I buy a book there and go meet her because I want to talk to her just because I don't know if y'all know this but Emma Mills used to have a YouTube channel called Elmify and I was obsessed. She would write original songs that were just like stupid fun songs and I like want to go up to her table and be like can I perform Narwhals with Arthritis for you? Like, I loved her YouTube channel, and I don't know if it's appropriate at a book signing to just like be a YouTube meet and greet. <laughs> also, John Green is gonna be at the book fest. Oh my god, Gordo. Really excited about John Green. John Green's panel conflicts with the booktube panel, and honestly, his panel is just like about let it go or like whatever that Christmas, let it snow when frozen intercedes. Gordo. So I'm like tempted to keep an eye out for him whenever we're in the author area because the booktubers are permitted in the author area. But I know if I see him backstage, I'm gonna be too shy to go up to him and say anything because they're like, don't bother them. So there's like a low key part of me hoping that he'll be like, oh, booktubers, let me go interact. But I don't know what this year is gonna be like. I don't know if I'm gonna meet any authors. I'm gonna get there early so I can see two panels. Then I'm gonna go to my panel, probably insert nervous diarrhea somewhere in there. This is a lot of talking about a day that you're probably not going to, so let me just start off this reading vlog with what I'm reading. I'm just now realizing the bookmark fell out of this, so I can't give you a page count. But I started Furyborn by Claire Legrand. This is a YA fantasy book. It is a book set in like dual millennium. So one timeline is about Queen Riel, who has like fire, magic, no, she has everything magic, and that's set like a thousand years before another timeline, which is of Eliana and she's a bounty hunter and she joins like a rebel group. I'm not sure how these two timelines will interact, but it's about like how this like centuries long battle has been brewing. Hi Gordo. So this has a magic system and it also deals with fallen angels or like angels in general. Ah! What? You're so needy. It's like he can sense I'm leaving today and he's like, no, wants mom to give attention. So I lost my bookmark once again, but I think I'm like page 15. I'm not very far at all. Hi. I'm sorry, I have to go. But the writing style on this is pretty simple, meaning like it's easy to read, not it's bad. So I'm liking her. Talk to you soon. I haven't vlogged all day and I know I'll regret it if I don't. So here's my vlog clip. Hello. It's 12.18, our panel's at 12.30. We just finished lunch and by finished lunch, I mean like I had a cookie while wanting to vomit it back up because I'm, ner I'm nervous. Okay. Hey, eyeshadow. We got friends. They didn't notice I'm vlogging them. We got more friends. I saw John Green and I lost my mind. Also, I have so many stories, so I'm gonna have to tell you when we're not like in a crowded room. Oh, now you notice I'm vlogging. I showed all of you earlier and you're just like. Okay, so Whitney's panel is up next. Uh, with the other booktubers, so we are going to go in and see how she does. Hopefully I'm filming this correctly. So come hang out with me for a little bit and we will go see her. Here we go. Just if you can say it, my name. Subscribe. With that, okay, hello and welcome to the YouTube channel. Um, if I could just have you briefly introduce yourself. Hi everyone, I'm Whitney Atkinson. I am from, oh, thank you. I love you. <laughs> oh my god. Um, did I say my channel name? I'm Woody Novels. Yeah, as previously mentioned, I'm currently locked out of my account, so I might be restarting. So, <laughs> channel names are, so I'm taking suggestions. <laughs> Panel of meet and greet is over. Now I'm just sitting. 
is like, Good heckin' morning. Yes, I'm still wearing my makeup from yesterday. I was like, oh, I'll do a recap of everything that happened while I'm still wearing this makeup. And so it still counts the, the next day, right? Oh, Lord, it was wild. So this year at the book fest felt a lot less busy than last year's, which I was thankful for because we weren't crammed like sardines. <laughs> so I had planned to catch some panels, but I arrived too late. I was like, whatever, I'll just hang out in the green room with all the authors and all the other booktubers. So I get there, I go meet Francina, who I have known since like 2016, and I love her and I gave her a huge hug. I got a copy of her book, Smash It, and she like signed and personalized it to me. I adore her. I will link everyone that was on the panel down below because they're all such good friends. So it was Francina, Naya, Elias, and I. So we're all sitting there in the green room with all the authors beforehand and I'm freaking out like John Green is over there and I'm like <laughs> and I'm seeing like Libba Bray at the table next to us and like and like Rudis Apetus was over next to us and like all these people were there and I was just losing my marbles. But then I'm just sitting there and fucking Marissa Meyer comes and sits down next to me and I'm like hello <laughs> so I didn't say anything and she was just kind of talking with our table and then finally she's like I, I figured I should introduce myself to you because we're sitting next to each other hi I'm Marissa and I was like in my head I was like I know <laughs> but I was just like hi I'm Whitney and then I was just gonna like leave it at that but then later in the day she'd also come and sat by us again and we were all talking about like how she's an author and we're all just book tours <laughs> except Francie and I was both but whatever and so I told her I was like earlier today when you introduced yourself and you're like hi I'm Marissa I wanted to be like I know and then she got up and left the table so I think she realized she was sitting amongst peasants no offense booktube but like I had such imposter syndrome being in the author room because I'm like that's Ransom Riggs right there all these famous authors like Neil Schusterman was there and like Kirsten White Hafsa Fazal I was just like I'm not worthy I kept seeing Emma Mills walking around that I wanted so badly to say hi to her but there's like rules where we can't talk to people. I mean, we can talk to people, but we can't be like fans, you know, in like a, a situation like that and be like, oh my God, can I get a picture? Cause it's their downtime. So every time she walked by me, like my heart would be like, oh my God, that's Emma Mills. And I wanted to say hi because I love her YouTube channel and I didn't really like any of her books that I've read. So I felt really awkward, but I wanted to be like, I love your YouTube. And I didn't and I regret it. So at one point, I was sitting, oh, here's another thing. We were sitting at our table uh, after we had our lunch waiting for our time to go on to our panel. And I was sitting, I shit you not, like three feet away from David Levithan. And John Green walked up to go talk to him. And he was standing right behind me. And I heard his voice in person. And I was like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. And I could have just like stood up and been like, oh, hi. John but I was I did not want to cause a disturbance because even Marissa Meyer was like John Green is here like it was such a big name among everyone that I didn't want to bother him and be like I'm a lonely booktuber hi so I snuck a pic which I'm sure I wasn't allowed to do Mary or Kristen if you're watching this I'm sorry I had to <laughs> when is the opportunity kind of present that I get a selfie with John Green oh my god it was wild I think I mean the panel went well too but the, the part that I'm gonna remember is just like being in close proximity to such successful talented people and I'm just like y'all are sitting here writing books making cash being creative I just fart on camera and, and laugh I got home I took a nap when I woke up I was kind of in the mood to read like weirdly being around books and people who read hi Rosie that does not include you you can't read kind of inspires you to read so I had gone with my friend Rachel who is incredible I love her. Like, someone recognized her, too. They're like, are you Rachel? I'm like, yes, girl, get your hype. She was there, and she reads, like, a book a day. She's such a quick reader. And so we were talking about all these books that were at this festival, and she bought, like, seven books. So I got home, like, really inspired by her and by the by the event itself. And so I decided I'm going to get further into Furyborn. And I actually read, like, 130 pages. So I'm on page 144 now. I've already sticky-tapped this up. And listen... 
I really like it. <laughs> I'm not gonna pin a five star rating on this yet. Like it's not incredible, but I'm really, really liking it. It's giving me Serpent and Dove vibes, not necessarily because like the plots are anything similar, but at least in Eliana's point of view, she's very much like Lou where she's very smart mouthed and really talented and she's a bounty hunter so she's like I hate comparing her to Selena Sardothian but that's like the most quintessential like YA assassin heroine I can think of. Basically the place where she lives 10 years ago it was overthrown by the Imperium? No, I don't know what it was called. The Empire? And they're like not the best government. And there's a whole resistance against it that's called like the Red Crown. In order to get money and survive, she works as a bounty hunter for the kingdom that overthrew them. And so she is killing like people who try and smuggle people out of that kingdom and captures like traitors, even if they're kids. And then a guy from the resistance who's like the most notorious one is called the Wolf. She's put on a mission to kill him or like capture him and then he shows up at her house and it's like hey I need your help with something so it's like they're on opposite teams but they have to forge a bond and it's, oh it's so good but then the other perspective is what's her face R Riel and like I said it's like a, a thousand years before this isn't a spoiler but like this character dies in the first in like the prologue and because of her death all magic is eradicated and so it's talking about how rather than just having like one specialized power she actually has all seven and so she's having to go through these trials that the king gives her because there's a prophecy that there's going to be two queens who are able to wield all seven powers and one of them is like the light queen she like she'll save the world and one of them is the death queen who will like get rid of the world so the writing is really quick i like all the witty banter in this between the main character and her like male counterparts there's only a couple clunky lines where it seems like the dialogue is a little bit forced or she'll stop to explain something and it's like really obvious that like okay that character wouldn't actually talk like that she just inserted that so that we could get some backstory but other than that i'm a fan it's made me laugh out loud a couple times it's really kept my interest i don't know if i mentioned this i was actually sent this by the publisher like a year ago hi gordo what are you doing did you have good breakfast so they sent me the first book. They sent me the second book right when it came out. I don't know when that was, but there's also a third one. I don't know what it's called. Daylight savings time is the best time. I'm so happy it's not gonna get dark at 7 p.m. anymore, even though I woke up forgetting that I just set my clock back, so I'm I'm, a ha I'm an hour behind right now. Anyway, I was gonna go to Kristen's today, but then my throat hurt a little bit when I woke up, and I was scared that, like, I might have caught something from the festival, so I was like, to play it safe, I won't go over, because she's recovering from being sick, and she's very susceptible to being hospitalized if she gets sick for health reasons, and so I'm not gonna go over anymore, and I'm sad. But yes, welcome to my Sunday. I'm glad that I feel, like, energized to vlog. Maybe I just need to transition back back to phone vlogs because vlogging on my camera is just not fun also i broke it so that like makes it less fun okay see you later i have that lana del rey song from tiktok stuck in my head where she's like and i'm spinning like the ballerina i forgot that this glitter does not come off to save your life <laughs> actually going and doing something with my day. So this morning I felt a little bit weird like I was gonna get sick, but now I feel fine. So I think it was maybe just, you know, when you wake up and you're like, oh, my body. So I'm still gonna go over to Kristen's, which is where I'm getting ready to leave to now. Her apartment has been a mess for like months. 
and I don't want to expose her, but I just want to go over and help her clean it because I like cleaning. I made her some dinner the other night, so I'm going to bring her some leftovers. But before I go, I want to update on how much I've read. I took like 20 minutes to repaint my nails, so I listened to the audiobook for this that my library had while I did that. Why is my pantry open? So because of that, I'm now on page 215, so I'm like exactly halfway through. It's still really good, but I noticed a difference in how much I was enjoying it. Oh, no. I noticed that I really liked reading it physically more than the audiobook, so I don't think I'll keep listening to the audiobook. These little gremlins are out of food, so I'm gonna head to PetSmart and then go to Kristen's apartment. I cleaned with Kristen for like five hours today and we are still not done, so I'm going back tomorrow. I didn't record, so my manicure I just did <laughs> is pretty much gone because I washed dishes for like three hours. I'm already wearing leggings and tennis shoes. I might as well change my shirt and go take a quick walk in my gym. So I think I'm gonna take my like paperback book and go walk. I'm not gonna listen to my audiobook. Like I said, the audiobook just did not come off the same way. It was during a chapter where there was like a reveal of something and I feel like it dampened that because I was like, wait, what just happened? So I'm just gonna change my shirt. I'm not gonna sit down and get too comfortable. It doesn't matter why, but I don't shave my legs, but tonight I decided to shave my legs and I just needed y'all to witness this moment. Oh, oh, yes, dolphin legs. I feel like that movement implied something. There's no one under there. I wish. I love being motivated. And when I tell you I, I'm gonna do something, I do it. It's awesome. I'm in bed with my ice water. I've got some acne patches on. That's why you see those. And I wanna get a couple more chapters into Furyborn. I got to page 253 when I was in the gym and it's still pretty good. I was feeling a little bit of a preference toward Eliana's chapters. And now we've gotten to a point where like Riel has some interesting stuff in her chapters. Because for a second, the trials were kind of confusing. But now it's introducing like stuff with the angels. And I think that's a lot more fascinating than like, let's test your powers. Because like every book does a let's test your powers thing. And of course she's going to have powers. Also, I would apologize that like these phone vlogs aren't the same quality as... Oops, I almost tore that off. <laughs> these phone vlogs aren't the same quality as my camera vlogs. But I feel so much better vlogging on my phone. Like, I don't know if you can tell, like my energy is so much better and... I I don't know what it is. I just think it's because like I can see myself and it's like lower quality. So I'm not like interrogating what I look like. I'm not going to psychoanalyze phone vlog versus camera vlog, but I'm going to do this for a while until I can build back up to my camera. But this is just the easiest thing I got going for me. Anyway, back to my princesses. Only one of them is a princess. Is she even a princess? She's not even a princess. Back to my girls. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that above the wind, but I either have a cat or a ghost. What are you doing? What are you doing? I can hear you. What are you doing? You're so naughty. It's time for bed. No more playing in the sink. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It was so difficult to wake up today that I realized it's because I looked over and it was still dark outside because it's all rainy and gloomy today, which I love, but I'd rather stay home and relax. <laughs> because I had to set an alarm for both days this weekend, I woke up today thinking it was still the weekend. I was like, damn, wait, no, I have to go to work. <laughs> so, Last night, I didn't read as much as I wanted to and I stayed up later than I wanted to, but I got to page 270, making slow progress. I do tend to read on my lunch break, so I'm gonna continue this today at work, but then after work, I'm going back over to Kristen's, so I don't know how much I'll be able to do tonight. I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> I bring you a delicious homemade lunch <laughs> and you are picking out the best, arguably the best part. 
Who likes peas? Me likes peas. Nobody likes peas. But they squish in your mouth and it's like it's a the pimple, best part. And it's, it's the disgusting. best part. No, the pop, it like. No. Not really. Um, the chicken dumplings is the best part of the chicken dumplings. This is amazing, by the way. But the pea is part and of the chicken. The carrots are so good. It's a great addition. I've never had it like this. Oh. You're. Mm -hmm. That's for you. Thank you. <laughs> Were you recording that? No. Oh, hi. Me and my gal and Ryan, but he loves chicken. Don't be suspicious. No, yeah. Don't be suspicious. <laughs> I needed this today. Me too. I love fuzzies so much. Okay, there's a woman who lives in my apartment complex walking her dog outside right now and she might be watching me film this clip, but you know, that's the risk I'm willing to take for getting content outside my own home. I just got back from Kristen's house. Like I said, I was gonna go hang out with her after you saw that we were at Fuzzy's. Uh, we met up with Ryan and talked for like three hours. So we did really great at cleaning. We ended up not feeling like cleaning. So we just laid on her couch. She took a fat nap. I read my book. So reading of day, I got to page 372 too so i only have like 100 pages left i think i heard like a little a little nibble that this book had some sexy stuff in it but i didn't really know what that meant this book has sex <laughs> people were really hyping up serpent and dove because it had some like raunchy sex scene i think that this one is like more vivid so do with that information what you will <laughs> okay i'm i'm hyping it up a lot but i I will disclaim, I don't love the plot of it. I really like the characters, but the plot has yet to really grab me because there's so many different moving parts. I feel like I need a glossary of what everything is because there's world building that was kind of explained and then we moved away from it and then there was like a plot twist involving it and I'm like, wait, what is that again? And also the plot of this is so predictable like to the point where you could literally guess what happens in the book based on the synopsis and like the prologue which i don't mind because like i like the journey of seeing how the characters go about getting to where they are but it's just not imaginative at all the direction that the plot goes so i'm really just in it for the characters i really like eliana Rurel is okay, but I prefer Eliana's chapters. I think it's just that there's two different magic systems occurring. There's angels, who are like obviously powerful because they're immortal beings, but then there's also elemental magic, and that's not really related to the angels, question mark? So I just don't really know how those two come together and like why one exists with the other, but finally kind of the two perspectives are converging, and I'm actually getting to like a really climactic part of the book, no pun intended. Yes, there was just a sex scene all day today everyone was exhausted it is the monday after daylight savings time and we were all like what time is it like we were all so dead and so tired so it wasn't just me but today was rough anyway this is the most awful lighting for the past five minutes i'll see y'all inside now you definitely can't see me so i don't know why i turned that off i hope this woman and her dog are still out here because her dog is so cute i want to pet her she lives two doors down from me and i don't know how to be her friend but i want to be her friend leave suggestions in the comments what I can say to her when I see her walking her dog because I see them all the time and I want to be like I love your dog can I come over <laughs> hi all I'm home from work I made this bun on accident you can't really see it but I realized I kind of look like Belle from Beauty and the Beast kind of cute kind of not I have no plans for today <laughs> and I have like 60 pages left in my book which will only take me like 45 minutes and because it is a beautiful day outside i'm gonna go read on my balcony i read a little bit on my lunch break but then we had a fight about whether or not cottage cheese is good a conversation i clearly had to be part of to defend cottage cheese so i'm gonna finish the rest of this and i don't know if i want to jump into the sequel or what i'm gonna read next but we'll get to that when we get to it i'm just gonna finish it for now okay hi I finished it. I was gonna sit there, but go off. So I know I just sat here like talking out my ass about how much I like the book. So it's gonna be really weird reviewing it and like altering my answer a little bit, but this book is hard to explain what went wrong. So the most general thing I can say is like the first half is a lot better than the last half and you can kind of even tell with my sticky tabs like there's a cutoff. <laughs> this book was trying to be three things and I think it should have only chosen two of those things. So it was trying to be like assassin novel, elemental magic, and angels. Well I guess there's more than three because there's also like scientific testing on humans and like making human hybrids and there's time travel so it's like 
it just chewed off a lot. And this is one of those books where I don't have like one general complaint. I feel like almost the author got tired of writing the last half of this book and just like it became a lot more sloppy. Like ends weren't meeting. The end and the beginning didn't even meet up. There's just so many small things that I still have questions about. The light bringer and the death bringer, like that isn't really ever explained. And that's the whole point of the prophecy that drives the book. Oh, the characters ended up getting like sort of out of character in the last section of this and it just became pretty unrealistic. So it was underexplained and then the plausibility of certain events wasn't that great. So honestly this went from like a 4.5 stars to a 3.5 stars based on the last 100 pages. It did win a lot of brownie points for being pretty sexy so. Hi everyone. Did you say hi Gord? Ah, good boy. Today's been I mean, let's back up. This week has been rough. I know I keep talking about how tired I am, but seriously, I feel dead. Like today after work, I literally went to go grocery shopping because last night I went to Popeye's because I had nothing to eat for dinner. And I pulled into the grocery store and sat there in my car and thought about how much I didn't want to go grocery shopping. And I literally just like left. <laughs> oh my God. I don't know why I don't feel like doing anything, but I just want to like lay around and I don't want to cook. I don't want to spend money. Like I pulled my book out of my bag to come over here and read but I guarantee I'm probably just gonna fall asleep on the couch I'm not even joking work is getting pretty stressful because of the coronavirus because there's so many things up in the air like can we do this can we not do this like we have a major event that happens every year and it's about to be canceled I also had a meeting with the CEO today and I woke up at like eight o'clock and I usually leave my house at eight o'clock but I was literally just sitting on the toilet like I don't want to go to work today I don't know why I have no motivation it literally comes and goes in waves some weeks I'm like yes and some weeks I contemplate taking a personal day every single day so today was one of those days I wanted to stay home so bad but I got free lunch at work at least it was a really good salad. I just have no motivation. Can you tell? I don't know if it's like an energy thing or a personality thing or a lifestyle thing or a coronavirus thing, but I'm just not my best. I'm gonna think about reading this, but most likely probably just get back on TikTok and YouTube and do that instead. Hi, Rose. Please stop scratching my chair. It cost $130. Thank you. This week has been bonkers i think i briefly mentioned coronavirus the other day when i was like haha it's not that bad it got bad <laughs> so all day thursday and friday we were in conference rooms just drafting emails and website copy and so much to respond to it so it was exhausting but now i have a couple of days off i'm gonna fix up my face i think i'm gonna go to trader joe's this morning just to get like some frozen meals just in case also i want to let you know i stopped reading the book that i had picked up so i had been reading life on the leash which was like an adult romance book but i just got a chapter into it and wasn't feeling it. And I know I sound ridiculous being like, I got one page in and decided I didn't want to read it. But all these books I've gotten, I got for review like over a year ago. So I don't feel an attachment to them as much as I did when I first got them. And I'm just like, feel no pressure to read them. And then Life on the Leash just caught a little bit obnoxious. So I stopped reading it. And so I picked up Radio Silence by Alice Oseman and I got 122 pages into her. If you ask me about this book, I would tell you that like, everybody loves this book. I've not heard a single bad thing, but I'm not really liking it. <laughs> it's reminding me of Eliza and her monsters, which I DNF'd because I thought it was so lame. I, I guess I just don't like stories about people who are on social media or like people who create stuff. I don't know how to explain it, but it just comes off so corny that she's like, oh my god, my Tumblr username is this, and he doesn't know that I'm the girl on Tumblr. I'm like, I don't know if it's a pop culture reference thing or what. It's just not my vibe. The writing is really unremarkable to me. I have no sticky tabs because really nothing is standing out. It's easy to read and the chapters are super short, so that's why I'm kind of flying through it. But so far, there's like nothing really in this that I'm like, okay, that's great. But yeah, I'm gonna continue this this weekend and hopefully finish it. But I'm gonna go get ready for my day, then see if Trader Joe's is all wiped out of groceries because I want orange chicken. Cool. 
Have a good weekend. <laughs> I just finished editing my vlog. Gordo's doing a nice loaf next to me. I got my YouTube account back. I don't know if I've even mentioned that I was locked out of my YouTube, but we are back and better than ever, so uploading now. I have not eaten today, so I think I'm gonna make me some nice lunch. I look like Toad from Super Mario Kart right now. I just really wanna get my book finished because I'm not loving it, but it's easy and fast to read, so I just wanna move on to something else. What the heck? So I've got like eight hours of nothing to do today, so I think I'm gonna finish my book. I'm gonna make me a ciabatta roll. If you've never had the Trader Joe's everything ciabatta rolls, hello, I will mail you one, call me. I finished the book. I'm done, it's over. I didn't love it. I kept waiting for it to be like, okay, this is why people love it, but I didn't. It was just like, okay. It's like multi-layered why it didn't really work out for me. Mostly, I just can't take a book seriously when it's like my Tumblr followers are messaging me. So a big part of it was just that like, all the technology and the social media, like the modern references, I think just really, make it cringy in my opinion but also like the podcast itself does not make sense because it's like a fictional podcast and there's like these deep undertones to it and there's like the whole fandom is its own like character in the book and then the entire conflict of the book is these characters don't want to go to college. <laughs> like the podcast is called Universe City because it's like university. The big conflict is like, oh, they don't want to go to college. Then, then don't. <laughs> like I just could not relate to this book because I never was under that pressure that I had to go to college. So it's like not something I can relate to. And for me, it would have just been like, okay, then tell them that. Spoilers, at the end of the book, she tells her mom like, I don't want to go. And her mom was just like, okay. And that was it. Like we went through 500 pages for that. I didn't hate it. Like it was easy and fast to read. I read it in like three sittings. So I think I'm going to give it three stars. I'll add it to my narrow repertoire of books with bisexual main characters. But yeah. The... So I've got a week to read another book. And I'm wondering if I should start I don't even know if this book is called Crescent City or House of Earth and Blood. But my friend Rachel let me borrow this book because she said it was so good and I can't go to my library because they shut that down. Coronavirus. I'm just like, do I want to get into an 800 page book? Yeah, I just read like the first two paragraphs and this is just too much for me right now. I think I'm gonna wait till after Imagine Me comes out for that. So, little sneak peek at my kitty on the couch. It's a cute kitty. Let me go peek at my TBR cart and see if there's any book. Oh my God, you're so cool. Hi, baby. And Mr. Jealous is coming. Are you jealous? because I said hello to your sister. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Such a fart. So the, all the oldest books on my TBR are classics. <laughs> and I don't want to read a classic right now. I'm just in a weird reading mood. Like I'm not in the mood to read really anything. Like even a Shatter Me reread, I'm like, eh. So I'm just gonna pick a book from my jar until I get to one that I'm like, okay, that sounds good. Okay, this book is And the Mountains Echoed by Hala Hassani, which is a long, probably gonna be emotional, so no thanks. This one is Next Year in Havana, which I just DNF'd, so I could take that one out. Okay, third time's a charm. This one is Never Night. <laughs> Gosh, should I try it? I'll try it. Let's see, Never Night is on my book series that I own multiple copies of but have not read all of them shelf. Here's my current read. <laughs> all I know about this is that it's fantasy and it's really good, apparently. So it's not dinner time, it's literally 2 p.m. 
I'm going to give her a whirl. We'll see.